All right, good day, everyone. Welcome to the second and final day of Marketech Apex two-day conference, What's Next 2023 Marketing in Asia Pacific. My name is Jovan. Yesterday on day one, we witnessed the gathering of top marketing leaders from the Philippines, Singapore, Hong Kong, and New Zealand to kick off the culminating event of What's Next 2022 and 2023. Without further ado, I would like to officially kick off day two and last day of What's Next 2023 Marketing in Asia Pacific with our first session in CMO decision making in 2023. This topic deserves to be the first presentation of the day. Marketers, as we all know, are continuously preparing and navigating the cookless world. Some brands have already started their cookless journey and some are still unsure of how to start. We have Tony Ruotanen, the Director of Advertising and Partnership for Asia Pacific at Panda Ads to shed light on how should CMOs navigate the cookless world with first party data. How are you, Tony? I'm doing great, how are you? I heard that you had an eventful day yesterday with Pow Pow stealing the show. <laughs> yes, and we missed you physically there, but the Panda Ad Steve and the rest of 250 people attended the event, had a great time. And uh, Tony, we're so excited to your presentation, so take it away. Thank you, everyone, and it's an honor to be here today uh, to be able to share more about how to navigate the cookie-less world with first-party data. To, in today's session, we will cover in three areas. One is about the cookie-less world. Uh, then we will talk a bit more about the retail media advertising, what that means. And then we will look at how to use like food Panda to unlock successes with first body data. And we have left some time for Q&A as well. So let's jump into the cookie world first and start discussing on what brands should uh, be thinking about. So what is cookie world and why should I care about it? Over the last two decades, marketers has been using third body cookies in targeting and advertising, as you know, be it for cross-site advertising, retargeting, or ad serving. In fact, 80% of the marketers today are still relying on cookies for their advertisement needs. And 77% has shared an opinion that the world without cookies will make it more challenging for a marketer moving forward. With privacy becoming increasingly important to consumers in the recent years, there have been steps taken towards phasing out third-party cookies. It's taken much, much longer than anticipated. But as you can see on the timeline on the right, we move towards a cookie world slowly, step by step. But by 2024, Google will officially stop third-party cookie support in Chrome. Since so many of us are still relying on third-party cookies, What's the sentiments and readiness levels amongst marketeers around this upcoming change? So according to a recent survey by, conducted by Epsilon, it showed that 69% of the advertisers think that it will be a bigger impact to an organization than the GDPR and CCPA had in the past. But only less than half of those surveyed, or 46%, feel prepared for the cookie world uh, that is coming to us in 2024. So money marketers still have a lot of work to do this year to be able to come, become ready and prepared for the new cookie world for marketing in 2024. The question is, are your organization ready for this change? If you look at the bright side, a coin has always two sides. The death of third party cookies can also be an opportunity for advertising innovation. Today, there are alternatives for marketeers look at and adopt and consider. The first thing is universal ID, which has been allowing companies to identify users across different websites and devices. This has gained some momentum in the industry today. According to a research paper, one in three marketeers is actually exploring this alternative to third party cookies. The second area that has emerged of interesting concepts is contextual advertising. Here is not the consent driven advertising method, it's more targeting potential customer relying on the context and content of a page. Some publishers have been exploring this aggressively to look at how they can create content for advertisers without seeking permissions from consumers to collect data. 
And it also enables machine learning and AI to create content in this new format. And of course, a third area that is of interest is first party data usage, perhaps the most alternative to date and even the most viable option for many organizations. Besides being compliant alternative to third party cookies, gives you a real insight into the consumers and their behaviors, both from a purchasing and purchase intent perspective. When utilized well, it can provide a direct impact on revenue and cost savings for an organization. So let's jump into looking at first party data and retail media advertising next. To succeed in the world without cookies, there is a need to employ a strong first party data strategy infrastructure within an organization. Refocus on consent based advertising by obtaining users information through consent before collecting their data. As a marketeer, the first thing you need to think about is to double down on first party data collection with consent. This you can achieve by designing multiple compelling touch points to collect relevant data along a customer purchase journey, be it through a loyalty program, rewards, or solution oriented content, which encourages users to share their data with you as an organization. You should also assess as an organization if you have the infrastructure and the skills within your organization to handle the data, analyze the data in order to be effective before you start collecting the data, because it could be a very complex environment. Then you need to think about how do I map the dependencies on cookies, cookie data today, quantify that impact on cost and revenue that will help you to decide on how much investment your organization need to emphasize on data collections moving forward. The second area that you need to consider is entering into direct relationships with either large publishers or retail media networks. Look for publishing platforms or retail media networks where you know your target audience or users visit and trust to make their purchase decision, for example. Use platforms with high volumes of user data sourced from online purchases, website forms, customer reviews, or even surveys to be enabled to get rich content into your database. Partnering with a large and trusted publisher to, that collects first party data from within and outside your industry can be a solid kickoff strategy without major investments for your organization to start the journey for first party data collection. Third area is to consider on investing is contextual advertising for non-personal targeting. Contextual advertising can work well, especially on upper funnel objectives, such as awareness. It focuses on the page instead of the user. It helps marketeers position ads based on content on the web page, expecting that users with certain collective behavior or interest will visit the, that site and the content and enable you to target audiences uh, with advertisement capabilities through that collect information. It takes advertisement beyond personal targeting and creates personalized marketing while minimizing the need for consent from the users. With the rise of first party data comes the next wave of digital advertisement. Retail media networks has been growing since last year. So what is retail media? Basically, it means ads on a retail website or application such as Food Panda, Lazada, as an example. We know that retail media has been growing aggressively since 2022 and is expected to grow further in 2023. And according to a Group M survey, retail media is projected to grow 60% by 2027. And if you look at where retail media investments on in total advertising is today, it represents 11%. So how about Asia? Are marketeers jumping on the bandwagon in this new trend here in the market? In short, yes. According to a recent IAB Southeast Asia and India survey shows that 99% of the Asian marketeers is planning to increase investment into retail media networks within the next 12 months. And 88% of the marketeers is also indicating that they will be advertising up to three different retail media networks this year as well. By why retail media? Well, there's two key factors to consider. One, it's consent-driven marketing with first-party data 
as a source. So you will know that there is a clear interest in behind the data. And it taps into consumers' insights, purchase behavior, purchase signal. Before I go forward, we have a survey going, a poll happening right now on the poll channel, where we are asking, have you used the retail media network so far? Some interesting results. So far, we have 60, almost 67% indicating that uh, you have tried retail media networks, while 33.3% is saying that not yet. So I think we can take that as an indication. So the next slide we will be covering is actually going to be looking at how retail media networks, how to think about retail media networks uh, moving forward. For a brand, how you should think about retail media networks. First, you need to think about finding the right platform for your brand. Look at the audiences that the platform offer, who is actually shopping there, what value does that audience give, bring you as a brand. Also, you need to think about how can I leverage this first party data, for example, driving traffic to mybrand.com or an other external source. Some examples of different platforms would be like Food Panda, which we are FMB and grocery platform, but there are other e-commerce platforms like general merchandising, potentially consumer electronic website. You need to always understand which sources of audiences do I want to tap into and which platform are actually ready to share my, their first party data for you as a marketeer. The second area is, of course, to look at what platform media assets are available to match your campaign objectives. Is the platform able to offer a full funnel capabilities from awareness consideration to lower funnel conversion? Or are they niched in a specific element of the funnel? And this is all about the marketeers need to do a holistic 360 campaign. Usually, you need to support branding with lower funnel in order to optimize your outcomes. The third area is all about looking at how do I can leverage the audience targeting of a platform? Can I drive campaign with different audiences to attract the right type of customers to my brand, even have a different brand messaging, enabling personalized advertisement? Those are the questions that the brand should really consider before investing into retail media. So let's look, the next area is about how to use Panda ads to enable and unlock success with first party data uh, for an organization. So before we jump into a case study, uh, a bit more about the Panda ads solution. Brands can leverage Fruit Panda platform to reach millions of customers across Asia Pacific through the solution that we are offering. What is so unique with the Fruit Panda platform then? Well, we have wide reach. We are covering 11 markets across Asia Pacific. We have over 125 million app downloads to date. And if we look at from a monthly active user perspective, we have over 33 million people using our platform every month across the 11 markets. The audience is high value, highly engaged audience, and they are digitally savvy. They are used to navigating the digital world and leverage technology. Having first party data on purchases, purchase intent for both F&B restaurants and groceries is a clear source of specific brands, but even for brands potentially that you could not associate with a, a platform like Food Panda. We also offer a full funnel uh, solution with variety of media assets from branding to conversion for brands to leverage in their marketing campaign. As you can see, here are some of the solutions that we offer both on platform and off platform to cater for customers branding needs or sales support needs. Today, we can offer the full funnel capability to both merchants and non-merchants. So we are a platform that allows endemic and non-endemic branding and media investments coming in. Of course, merchants on the platform here may need to drive sales uh, with conversion in mind while non-merchants like the financial industry, insurance industry, electronic industry, tend to use Food Panda as a traffic source to drive traffic to, for example, to a brand.com, where they are trying to raise awareness or consideration, or in the financial and insurance industry, even generate leads for the organization. As I mentioned, we have categorized and we are continuously investing in rich brand media solution to address both branding objectives, be it online on our platform or doing out of home offline solutions. So let's take Samsung as a great example who has been leveraging Food Panda to access first party data uh, last year during a product launch. 
Samsung used Panda Ad solution to support the Galaxy S22 launch last year with Food Panda across multiple markets. They were doing brand building, product awareness through our order tracking page asset. They had both static and video images, uh, video running. Once you clicked the ad, it redirected a consumer to Samsung's official website where customers could learn more about the products, the feature, and they could even place an order and get it delivered to their home within the next day. This enabled Samsung to lever one, our audience, first party audience segmentation and drive campaign awareness to their website. What was good after the campaign, they had access to the first party data, which meant that they could retarget customers uh, post the campaign itself. And before we wrap up the presentation today and move over to Q&A, here are some brands who engage with Panda as to help branding or drive sales for their products. You can see that we have unconventional advertisers on our platforms like Tinder, which is a dating app. We actually do FMCG, we do travel, we do electronic. We are a very diverse platform that offers rich solutions for diverse industries that to leverage. So my question is, will you be next to work with us to grow your business in Asia Pacific? With that, I want to give you a pow pow thank you and let's move and open up for Q&A session. All right. Wonderful presentation, uh, Tony. Happy to hear. <laughs> okay, I'm sure our audience uh, have a lot of questions for, for you. But before that, during the presentation, you did a quick survey and asked our audience if they have advertised on the retail uh, media network. After gathering all of the answers, okay, we found out that 22.2% uh, have advertised on the retail media and 77.8% um, hasn't yet, right? So it's a good opportunity for us, okay, to actually answer this question, Tony, how brands design personalized ad experiences for users on retail media platform? That, that's a good question. As you saw the presentation earlier, we had a slide where we talked about how to think about uh, going towards retail media. What are the things you need to consider? One key attribute is, of course, thinking about which are the audiences or who am I trying to reach out to? Like I mentioned, do I want to reach out to general merchandising platform? Am I focusing on food, groceries, or electronics? Once you understand who you want to reach out to and create and looking at what offerings they can offer you as a solution, do they have full funnel opportunities? Um, mm -hmm. And do they allow you to do audience targeting? A good example I want to use on how mobile phone manufacturers use, like the example we had Samsung, how they would be mm -hmm. using personalized uh, uh, advertisement is with our audience targeting they can reach out to see who are android users and who are ios users for example so they would be catering a different advertisement messaging to ios users where they are trying to learn over a conversion from apple to android devices and with android users they would be more focusing on the new features that they've been releasing in the Android, trying to lure people from competing devices into their platform. You need to really understand what capabilities each retail media offers and what they can offer you as a brand. Right. So I really agree with you, um, uh, Tony. You need to work with the right retail media platform where they offer you different flexibilities and functionalities to really get that ROI, that marketers need, right? So now, since we are still talking about what's going to happen in the future, google world, right? What do you think, okay, advertisers need to prioritize when preparing for the phase out of the third party data from Google in 2024? Or first, do you believe that it's going to happen in 2024? Well, that, that's the million dollar question if you think about it, google has been talking to phase out the third party cookies in 2022 then they delayed it to 2023 and it was then delayed for 2024. i personally yeah. think that in 2024 google will phase out finally uh third party cookies it is pushing, putting a bit of time pressure for people 
I think the key thing is for an, where I see, I used to work with a, a media agency group, and when we were looking, talking to clients about readiness for the cookless world, the biggest challenge I think is people didn't understand how complex and how uh, much effort it takes to build a solid data collection infrastructure for your own first party data. Uh, mm -hmm. Third party marketplaces like Lazada, Shopee, uh, tend to not want to share first party data, which means how do you obtain first party data? And what we saw during the pandemic, a lot of brands actually set up their own brand.com, potentially just more from uh, engagement point of view, in awareness about product awareness, but that gave platforms really an opportunity to start collecting first party data. And I, if you haven't really had a discussion internally, do I have the right data scientist? the analyst that can help me to collect first party data, how would we use the first party data? That would be the number one thing to solve urgently because I believe 2024 cookie list world will come a reality for us. Right, right. And you are you are doing advertising and partnerships for Panda ads, right? So I want to ask about your experience here, Tony, right? Yep. So in your experience, what are some of the best practices for brands and advertisers looking to start retail media advertising? I think my sentiments when I've been working in the media industry, there was a lot of brands uh, tend to be very conservative when they explore new media channels. They are so used to Meta, Google as the foundation for any advertisement that they do that there is almost an inherent obstacle to explore something new, something unknown. Uh, and the, the best brands that I work with over the years has usually been brands that are open-minded, let the numbers speak, take the lead to at least do a pilot campaign uh, and try and learn. It's only through experience and actually running a campaign will you understand the dynamics involved with the retail media network. It's not for every brand for sure. Uh, I've seen brand who's not successful on retail media, and that's where we try as an organization to navigate and help brands to show them the potential risks and pitfalls when we, they approach to talk to us, for example. But the key thing for a brand is do try it out, uh, do a test campaign, a pilot campaign, to make sure that you learn for first hand how the platform is working for your brand. You might need to test two or three platforms before you find the right one. Uh, and there is no magical bullet. So it's more of test and learn, have that learning attitude when it comes to media investments as well, and not just stick with the, the solid now knowns that you've been used to several years and take the leap of faith and test out new solutions. All right, good. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you so much, Tony, for your time and for sharing with us where you know your insights, okay, on how to navigate the cookless world, right? So um, we're looking forward for Panda Ads evolution, right, on and disrupting the marketing industry through your retail media network. Thank you for your time. Thank you. It was a pleasure to be here. Have a great day ahead.